What's going on everyone? It's Bales and welcome back to another AFL Fantasy Round Review. Uh, it's post round two. So uh, two rounds are in the books. Had a better round two, um, which was uh, very, very nice. Uh, scored 1884, um, which actually had to be a uh, ranking for the round. Uh, I think it was at 3,316, I believe. I'll just get, quickly get exactly that up. I don't know why. It'd be good if I had it on the screen here. I know you've got the overall and ranking and stuff, but it'd be good to see like the... Uh, Round right, actually, if we go to round two, does that come up and show it? Oh, yeah, cool. Yes, wait. Actually, I'll just, I'll just leave it on this screen. Um, so, yeah, um, uh, round rank of 3,316. Um, put me in over rank of 17,111. Uh, so uh, that actually put me up about 22,000 spots. So what we went for, yeah, 39,540. So, yeah, um, roughly about that 22,000 spots uh, just over. So that was really nice um, to, to really more than half my rank. Uh Heading in the right direction. Obviously, we want to get crack inside the top 10K this week. That would be the goal. Um, we'll go through my plus three and negative three uh, for the round. Plus three, it's got to go to uh, my VC on the Friday night is Jordan Dawson. Um, he was the top scorer of the round as well. So it's always nice to not only lock in a VC uh, early in the round, it's also nice to have the actual top scoring player of the round as my captain. So 131 is a pretty low score actually for um, for the high score of the round. Normally you have it, maybe one or two people go 135, 140 or more, but it seemed there were a lot of 110 to 130 scores. There weren't, um, obviously well, he was the only one that went over 130. So but yeah, very, very happy to have him as my VC. Negative three. A couple of a couple of poor performances. I think it goes to Riley Bonner though on debut. Only sixty one points. Disappointing. Obviously, when you bring someone in, you want that instant reward of of getting a solid score. And, and even though he was priced at that sort of, I bought him around the what he would have been just priced over fifty. I still got a top like a few points of value. But when I brought him in, I thought he was going to be this sort of eighty guy with Jack Sinclair back in the team. Now that's uh, sort of throwing a little bit of a curveball um, with him. But hopefully, he will uh, continue. Um, sort of what he did in round one, not what he did in round two. But uh, yeah, so there, plus three, negative three there. Let's get into the players. Um, so Lockie Whitfield, 102. It, it's it's hard for me to say I'm not happy because 102 is good. And he still put up a couple of solid scores. Like if you look at his scores here, he's still gone, what, 102. What did he get in the first round? Should have gone and match stats, not fixture stats. Yeah, the 100 and 102. I just, so averaging 101 of the two games, I, I feel like, and he's made made cash as well. So he's gone up 71k, which is obviously nice. But I still feel like I wanted more, if that may, if that makes sense. And, and I know that probably sounds greedy, but and I'm sure that all the Whitfield owners out there as well, like let me know in the comments below if you guys, if you're a Whitfield owner, did you were you happy with his two scores? Don't get me wrong, I'm happy with two hundreds, but I sort of feel like with on a buy this week, I was hoping he'd pop a one score of 120, and that would have made me feel a bit better. But only. The one sort of only the well the two hundreds and he got that big score in the preseason. But then again, I feel like these two matchups actually were probably not as good for a guy like him. I feel like he is actually going to score better in the tougher matchups because they're going to use him more. Um, it's going to be a, more of an end to end game. Whereas I guess what against North and, and Eagles, it was a lot more. There were wasn't much chipping around by the Giants trying to control time. So that could be something there. So I'm hoping that when he comes back off by when he's got. I think Gold Coast, I think he's got the Saints as well. Closer games, hopefully that means he'll he'll rack up the ball. But I'm still happy enough, but I hope sort of that make, that comes across and, and makes sense. But um, Harry Sheasel, on the other hand, has been absolutely fantastic. And it's been so good to watch him go about it. Um, two huge scores, 120, 121. You can't ask for much more. Like, And he only had the six marks. Only, I say, only had six marks. So that, that score was really, really good. 35 disposals. He looks fantastic, and I reckon he's, yeah, I did say Dacos 2.0 potentially uh, this year, and, and he's looking like he might go better the way he started, but we'll see how he goes, but he's uh, looking fantastic at the moment. Hayden Young, disappointing score. I'm not as concerned, I guess, as, as other people are. Um, I think a few people are concerned with the whole, well, the, his, like, his role, um and the score and his scoring, but I'm I'm pretty happy with his role. Um, obviously the scoring wasn't there this week. He got a 95 the week before, and that was essentially in three quarters. He went back into defence. That would have been a hundred. And if that was a hundred, I think we're probably looking at him differently. The thing that's more important for me is, as I said, that role. So he's got the he was a second um, in CBAs, which is positive. If there was ever a time he was going to go back, it was going to be this week with all the injuries. He didn't. They brought in a younger guy so they can keep Young in the midfield. I think he's fine. I'm not stressing too much about him just yet. And also you can hide behind the fact that. 
he's also uh, very very popular um and uh what nearly 47 percent or just a tick under so I'm not too concerned. If, if we see another couple of weeks of, of sub-90 scores, then I'll start to worry a little bit. But for me at the moment, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, he's, he's pretty comfortable there at D3 for me. Christian Salem. Now, this is interesting. So uh, a lot of emotions in this game when I was watching Melbourne Hawthorne. First half, 19 points, and I was thinking, this bloody spud. Like, keeps doing this to me, Salem. I've only plenty of times in the past, and he always finds a way to stuff me up. And then the second half, especially that final quarter. That final quarter was disgusting, but I loved it. 61 points with 10 touches, 10 kicks as well. Nine marks and a tackle. Absolutely piggerish junk time stuff right there. Um, got himself to 105. He is on the chopping block, however, because he didn't have a CBA, which um, was the one thing that I was looking for. With a few injuries as well, obviously, to the defence. So I just assume they'll put Petty back and um, Tomlinson will probably come in for uh, May, potentially. So that might mean Salem goes back into the midfield. But he's got Port Adelaide and uh, Adelaide these next two. They're pretty tough matchups for defenders. If he's playing midfield, it's different. But Port is still restricted anyway. So I think I'm happy to take the cash Jenny's made, move down um, to potentially another option, which I'll talk about with my trades at the end. So that's um, what I'm looking at doing. That'll pocket me a little bit of cash as well. So... Same isn't on Chomba. I don't think he's it's a very luxury trade, but I feel like I don't have too many issues in the side, which is which is very unheard of for me at this time of year. Normally, well, last probably three, four years, first three, four rounds, I have forced trades every single week. So it's actually good for a change to actually tinker around with the side and actually make trades that aren't forced, which is good. So Elliot Yo, 98, very, very happy with that. Had one quarter where he only had the two tackles and eight points. So 90 and three quarters. Again, you're so close to that 100. I think just the more that he keeps playing, the more he keeps building that match fitness up, um, it's just going to be good for, for him. And obviously went up a little bit as well this week, which people were a little bit concerned about. He went, what, 18K, break even to 60. Uh, the fixture, I believe, starts opening up a little bit. Um, obviously, Bulldogs is, is decent enough. Bulldogs given up points so far we've seen this season. Sydney, a little bit tricky. But then you've got like Frio, uh, sorry, Richmond, Frio, Gold Coast, Essendon, Collingwood, Melbourne, so it starts getting a little bit better. Um, obviously, West Coast is still going to struggle um, in terms of games and stuff, but I still think there's an opportunity here for Yo to put some tons on the board as well. So Zach Williams, very, very hand, uh, handy contribution from him this week. Obviously, allowing me to take the VC from Dawson. Blake House, he's been fantastic, mate. 169K um, in three games. Um, another 78 again. He's been really solid. Like 74, 66, and 78 in his three games. Um, I think you could field him. I think I still prefer him at D7 as good cover. And I guess if you've got a read like I do, I actually look at the fixtures. I'm actually able to loop Williams and Howes for every week for the next four or five weeks until Reed comes back. So I'm actually going to keep Reed there until we get a rookie that really sort of pops their hand up and, and says, bring me in. So, and I believe between these two is going to be really good. I'll be able to get the better, hopefully the better score out of them. And if one of them, Blake House plays a lot of the Thursday, Friday games coming up. So you can always loop him if he goes well, can bench Williams that week or, or whatever. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that um, structure there. The Bont. Um, first half, he was on, fifth, what, 51, 52, I think it was. Um, he was going okay. Um, had a bit of an ankle tweak, which got me a bit nervous watching that. I thought he was going to be done. Um, but he was fine. He, he's... as. as the longer the game went on, he looked better. Um, like he sort of the ankle thing looked like to be bothering him a little bit, but um, he started getting better as the game went on. But yeah, Bont for me, I'm still fine with him. I guess the first two matchups have been a bit tricky. Melbourne, he doesn't normally seem to go massive against them. He got a, like a 90 odd last year, got a 90 odd obviously la uh, last week, um, and then this week obviously the 104 um, at, against uh, Gold Coast at Mars, and we know funny things happen at Mars. But this week, he comes up against West Coast at Marvel, so I'm expecting a big score from Bont uh, this week, and I think he will repay the faith for all the people that paid up for him staying this way. But his fixture really does start to open up um, from here. So, like, you've, he's, and he doesn't have an early buy. Why is it doing that? He doesn't have an early buy. So, like, look, like Eagles, Geelong, Essendon, St Kilda, Frio, Hawthorne, Richmond. Like, Giants a bit tougher, Sydney a little bit tougher, Collingwood, Brisbane a bit tougher as well, Frio, but... It's more the fact that, yeah, like a lot of games at Marvel coming up as well. Like, look, Marvel, Marvel, Marvel. Like, there's one at yeah, Adelaide Oval, Optus, MCG, uh, NG Stadium. Like, there's a lot of good um, fixtures and, and grounds he's playing at. So I'm expecting Bont to start getting on that role now um, and, and going from 110 plus from here. John Dawson, obviously mentioned before, was really good for him to bounce back. It was good for Bont as well to get a ton after going um, 
90 the week before. But Dawson, 89, tough conditions against the Gold Coast, 131 against uh, Geelong. And yeah, I expect Dawson to really start kicking in again now. He's had at least 85% in both, I think, or sorry, might be 84% in both games. So he's clearly the number one guy. They want him in there all the time. But obviously, Crow's got to change a few things up in there, I think, because uh, haven't gone too well early, unfortunately. Um but I don't think it'd be Dawson moving. I think it could be a, like a Crouch or a Laird, potentially, uh, going like a half forward and pushing into the stoppage and allowing your Rankins and Rochelles and stuff like that in the centre clearances. But um, but yeah, that's my, what they'll probably do. But I expect Dawson will be fine. Jack Steele, he looks back to the Jack Steele of old. 120, backing up from, what was it, the 110 or something he got the week before? Just un- Or was it just under? Um, why do I keep going fixture stats? I want fixtures. I want the match stats. Um, that's my fault. 108. Okay, yeah, cool. So, but yeah. Exactly what we what we paid for, but then more as well. I was hoping he got that one ten, and he's got one fourteen after two weeks, and which is really good because it's not like it's been two easy opponents either. Like Geelong and Collingwood aren't particularly easy. The thing that's impressive is his seventeen tackles over the two weeks. I think Frico tweeted out he's had twenty three tackle attempts and landed seventeen, which is really good. So good to see Jack still back. Um, and as Mitch from Hatchat would say, looking sexy as well. Um, Nick Martin, 103, really uh, happy with that uh, against Sydney at the SCG. Tough matchup. Obviously, Redmond not being there. Jake Kelly's a late as well. So a few guys back there not there. Same with Ridley. But um, it's just good regardless for him to put, out that, put up that score. And I think in another game, he might take a few more marks and be able to bump that up to, towards the 120. But yeah, Martin, very happy with his score. Riley Bonner, obviously disappointing with a 61. I, I think he will bounce back. He did have a quarter with zero and a quarter with only three points. So he only scored three points in half of the game. The other two quarters, he had 37 and 21 points. So if he can do that for a whole game, he's, he's scoring 100. So I think I think he'll be better. Um, it seemed Gavin um, was the main guy and Jack Sinclair first game back. I think if he does this next week, he gets another 60, then I'll be jumping off. But I think at the moment, I'm happy to hold him. He's got Essendon, then he's got Richmond, a couple of good matchups. Um, is this week, is this under the roof this week? Um, I believe it is. Yeah, cool. So it's at Marvel. So... I'm expecting St Kilda to get into that chip chip game this week, and I think he'll go well. But again, if he doesn't this week, then we can look to jump off. But still break even to 37, I'm still happy to hold. McKercher, Sharp, Sanders, all great, all scoring over 70. Very happy with all three of them. Um, Sanders as well looked um, pretty impressive with that 78 there as well uh, at a difficult ground. Kircher, as always, was good, and Sharpie um, did well. Uh, Roberts on the bench. Disappointing I benched the highest scorer, but I guess it's, it's a good thing that it didn't cost me too much. It only really cost me what... I think Sharp was in my scorers. Well, let's have a look. So um, Wilson, Reed, Sexton, and Bonner. So yeah, Sharp was in my score. So I lost 12 points. Um, that would have been nice uh, to have those 12 points. It would have been near 1,900. But um, yeah, I'm, I was never going to bench Sharp over Roberts. It was either Sanders or, or Roberts. So I only really, really only lost seven points. There you go. Jai Clark, 45. Not enough, but I just feel like this week... It doesn't fit into my trades to trade him. So I think I'm going to hold. Um, but you never know. Um, we'll have to see. But then we don't actually know if he's playing until the Sunday night. So he's going to be a bench option. For, he's going to be on our benches anyway. But yeah, just uh, something to note as well with the Monday game there. Max Gorn, 107. Just did what he needed to. Very happy with another ton there. And even Tristan Sherry, who I brought in this week for Grundy. Good to gain those 14 points. And he made 50k as well, which is very, very handy. Um, 55k. Another break in a 32 um, got another decent matchup against Carlton um, this week. If he can put up another ton, he's going to be well over 700k this week. Uh, so very, very happy with him. Barnett, 29, his first game of the season. Um, I, I think West Coast want to play him. It's just, yeah, he looks he looks quite raw, um, and he's not on it. He's, he's quite young. So take going to take time to develop. Um, I think a lot of us are almost hoping he does get dropped because then uh, we could use him as our red dot loop, but um, he could be in there for a few games. we we'll have to see. Isaac Heaney. Probably the form player of the comp, um, to be honest. Could have potentially nine votes. Um, he's at least got probably seven or eight, um, and he's looking great. Uh, another 117, averaging 121 over three weeks. Uh, yeah, break into 60. He's going to be near 900K soon, and he's got Richmond and West Coast to come in his next two. So, uh, yeah, he is going very, very nicely. Um, for non-owners, it's tough because with that buy coming up, it's probably going to be a bit hard to bring him in unless you haven't got a lot of those guys on buy. Uh, in round five, you might be able to bring him in. But uh, yeah, very, very happy to own him. Zach Fisher, I, I liked a bit more of what I saw on the weekend. Um, 85 points. Um, obviously, they've got um, another game at Marvel this week. Uh, and they're on the away for a couple of games there, Norwood and GHB. So not great for the next two, but then Marvel again. A few games at Marvel. But I, I'm comfortable enough with him still there. 
it's not like forwards are screaming, like forward options are screaming at us to pick me. Um, really, Flanders is about the only other one, but he's on by. But actually, let, let's even we'll just have a quick look here just while we're going through the team here. If, like, if we look at forward options, like Flanders on by, McRae hasn't been back yet, so you can't bring him in until we see a few games first and see his role. Zorko, he's, he's a good option, but just the, walk, the walking injury just concerns me. Sounds like Darcy's going to be back next week, which means Luke Jackson becomes not as good of an option. Dylan Moore just dropped to 43, can't pick him. Dusty has been pretty subpar the first couple of weeks, so I wouldn't be looking at him. Kerno, key forward, not really keen to just bring him in. Jeremy Cameron was interesting, but he dropped to 60 on the weekend. I'd, I'm not sure about him. Um, Caleb Daniel as well. Like, I want to see a little bit more from him. Um, before looking at bringing him in. He's dropping in price as well, so he might be pretty cheap for us to look at. Tex, obviously, key forward. Why is that not... Um, oh, okay, there we go. Um, I was wondering why I wasn't doing that. So, like, Tex, I'm, I love Tex, but I can't bring him into my team at the moment. Jesse Hogan, obviously, he's been good, but you're not bringing him in. Toby Green will probably be a guy we look at just because the lack of forward options. Bolton, oh, I can drop a 30 or a 40, so I'm not really as keen. Like, and then you're looking at all these options. None of them feel confidence. Like Adams, we've got to see him come back and see if he even plays midfield. Obviously, with Heaney doing so well in there, maybe he's not going to play as much midfield. Perkins dropped to 60 on the weekend, so he's not really like trustworthy. Like Shelley, no. Um, like Keys, no. Lipinski, no. Like Baker, no. Like there's no one really here that I'm even like half considering. Like, obviously, Tom Powell is, is a guy that I'm, I'm looking at bringing in this week, but he's about the only one. Like Billings was solid, but. You're probably just going to wait now till after his buy and see how he goes against a couple of tough matchups now, and and yeah, that's pretty much it. So when I'm talking about Fisher, what I'm trying to say is like there's not really many options for to really bring in for him. So I just don't think he's really much of an issue. Just keep him there and and, and keep letting him do his thing. You get defender status, which will be which will be handy as well. James Jordan as well, seventy six. That's uh, what so is that three seventies now? He's got um in his three games because another seventy six. Um, he only had five points in the first quarter. He seems to have one quarter where he doesn't do much, and then the other quarters he goes okay. His time on ground has increased um, from that 71% in the first game, which is good. But yeah, pretty consistent, um, what, 276 in the 78. So making a decent amount of cash as well, um, breaking a 37. So, And he might be a guy that we're probably going to try and trade him at his buy, but it's going to be like because of the lack of four options. Maybe we just hold him. I don't know. Maybe because there's Heaney there as well. You probably got to trade Jordan because Roberts is on the bench. You're probably not going to trade Roberts just yet because of how good he's looked and the cash he's making. So, yeah, Jordan, very happy with him. Sexton could go potentially um, 470k move forward. I still expect him to play defence, but the the fact that Hardwick was willing to put him forward when uh, Roy Atkins came on is a bit of a flag. And Lacocious went back. Who knows if he's going to stay back or go forward. So for me, I'm, I'm probably looking to move off Sexton. You can always bring, we can always bring him back in if he starts playing that defensive role and going well, but I'm a bit concerned. Harley Reid, Darcy Wilson as well. Solid enough scores. They went in the best 18. It was just you're hoping they'd pop a good score. I think Reid will start to, like, a few those tough fixtures out the way. The more games he plays, I think the better he'll get. It showed some good moments as well on the weekend. Our West Coast Eagles fans will be very excited by um, what they saw in glimpses from him on the weekend. And Darcy Wilson, with, I think with Liam Henry going down, He's going to take that wing spot. He, he played that wing pretty much after um, Mason Wood went down. But the fact that Wood and Reed, so Reed, the fact that Wood and Henry are both injured, Wilson's going to take one wing. Does that mean Bonner goes to a wing? Does that mean Gavin goes to a wing? Do they bring in someone like a Hugo Garcia? And do they put, like, oh, sorry Brad, sorry, Brad Hill's on a wing. So um, I think it'd be Brad Hill and Darcy Wilson. Then they might bring in a, a young guy to play forward and may rotate through a wing. But I think Darcy Wilson will keep a wing spot. I, uh, he looked pretty good, especially in that third quarter. Lazaro 49 got subbed out. Um, I don't think he's going to get dropped. I think that he's had good enough pre-season. He's going to get... the Clarko's going to give him a few games, but just something like... The good thing is he plays Friday. If you've got a Cadman or if you do, are holding a Sexton, you can... Or a Harvey Thomas, you can actually loop Lazaro because he plays early in the round on Friday. So... Um, hopefully you can put up a good score, and then you can bench someone and, and take his score, but we'll have to see. And then Wins as well was pretty good as well with a 60. So 58 and 60 in his two games in the regular, actual uh, proper fantasy season, um, pretty solid, so making a bit of cash there as well. So all in all, pretty pretty happy with the squad. Obviously Bonner, Young, um, and Sexton were probably the three disappointments, but everyone else did pretty, did pretty well. Um, so yeah, obviously... Move on to round three. My early trades at this uh, at this stage, I'm looking at going Salem down to Massimo D'Ambrosio. So that's going to make me two two hundred and seven k there. I just I don't like the matchups coming for Salem, and if he's playing this halfback role, it can be volatile. It's a luxury trade, I know, but I feel like my team is in a spot where I can actually do 
something like that and make a bit of cash out of it as well. And must be D'Ambrosio. Like, we'll have a quick look at him. Um, so, like, getting him up here, he's looked fantastic um, in his two games. What, 94 and 96. Got a break even of 19. There's plenty of cash there for him to make. Um, again, look great. He's had, what, 29 and 23 disposals, eight marks as well. He's, he's not afraid to lay a tackle as well. I've, I've, I've noticed that in the games. He, he's probably laid over 10 attempts, and he's been a bit unlucky with the tackles because the guys either just got a handball or whatever. So there is room for a little bit of growth in terms of tackle numbers and stuff. And again, they play a lot of games at... Um, Actually, no, they don't. They, yeah, sorry, they started a lot of the games at the MCG, but then they've got Adelaide Oval, People's First Stadium, Marvel, MCG Marvel. But it's a pretty nice enough run. I don't think Geelong are the same team as what they have been in the past. Collingwood could be okay. Uh, Gold Coast could be a little bit tricky, especially if that's a night game, I think, which it is. Or it might be a twilight game, I'm not sure. But North at Marvel, a few decent games coming up there, but I think the cash gen's going to be there, and, and I like him as an option. So for me, he's coming in. And then I'm going Sexton to Tom Powell um, because I'm pretty uh, keen on bringing him in. I think he's going to make a lot of cash. Um, and especially with the lack of forward options, I think Tom Powell could be a good option to put there at uh, F3 and obviously push Jordan down. Um, and yeah, so I'm pretty keen on uh, Tom Powell. He had the most CBAs for North on the weekend, um, which uh, really impressed me. So... Um, but I'm going to have a lot of North players. What, Sheasel, McKercher, Sherry, Fisher, Powell, obviously Lazar on the bench. So it's crazy how many players for North I'm going to have. But I guess they're all different purposes. Sheasel will be a top six defender. McKercher's a great cash cow. Sherry's a great Ruckman earning money. Um, Fisher's a solid enough forward. And, and Powell's uh, got a great role. And Lazar's on my bench. So I guess it all works out anyway. But um, there you go. So let me know in the comments below how you guys went in round two. Let me know your plus threes and negative threes, your score, your rank, uh, and any trade question you guys have, put them in the comment section below. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you do smash a thumbs up on the video. It does really help out the channel. If we can get 50 likes on this video, it would be very much appreciated. And also make sure you do subscribe to the channel. We are getting close to 2,000 subscribers, so if you haven't got involved, make sure you click the subscribe button. Uh, and turn notifications on as well, so you miss when we go live or upload any other content. So I'll be back tomorrow for the usual uh, Wednesday trade talk, going to the most traded in and out players for the round, and my top targets, and, and probably just an update of what my trades are, really, but they probably will be the same, to be fair. So, um, But yeah, obviously, we'll catch you guys in the in the trade talk. Obviously, all the social media links in the description below. Make sure you go and follow all of those as well, uh, and obviously, the TikTok, go and follow there, so I can get to 1,000 subscribers and stream the watch-alongs over on TikTok as well as YouTube. But yeah, I'll catch you guys in the Trade Talk video on Wednesday. So uh, have a good uh, night, guys, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. So I'm out. Cheers.